I love this movie. There you go, I said it. Take that. All right, everybody, today we're taking a travel back in time to look at a motion picture that I think really should be enjoyed and watched and checked out, and for some reason, never gets brought up as much as it should be. Today we're going back to 1993 to check out Fire in the Sky. Man, this thing's got all the elements to make a great cult classic, and man, it should be paid attention way more to than it is. But before we go any further, we get into all that kind of stuff. As always, and once again, to the trailer. How does it think? What makes it move? Why does it breathe? Questions anyone would ask about a man if they'd never seen one before. So for five days, a man was borrowed. The story that Travis Walton and five other witnesses told was so unbelievable, so unimaginable, that it has become the most famous case of UFO abduction ever reported. Okay, this motion picture was directed by Robert Lieberman. Now, he's basically a TV director. Basically does TV shows. That's what his credits really are. I mean, he's done stuff like, you know, 30-something, and uh, Gabriel's Fire, and uh, The Dead Zone, and Dexter, and, you know, Red Skies, and Eureka, and uh, Lost Girl, and The Expanse, The Listener, Criminal Minds. I mean, he's had a really, really good TV director career. I mean, there's no other way to put it beyond that, folks. Why he hasn't done more in the theaters and in cinematic motion pictures, I just don't know. But, did a great job here, and that's all I care about today. Okay, playing Travis Walton himself is D.B. Sweeney. He's been around, been in quite a few things that you might remember. I mean, he's been in stuff like uh, Eight Men Out and Memphis Bell, which is a really good movie. And uh, Hear No Evil and Hardball. You know, a lot of TV. You know, Lonesome Dove, uh, Strange Luck, uh, Jericho, uh, Life As We Know It, Crash, uh, uh, Two and a Half Men, uh, Mountain Men. So he's been around, been in a lot of stuff. You've probably seen his face. You know, he's quite young here compared to maybe some of the other stuff you've seen him. But out there and about. Okay, playing Mike Rogers is Robert Patrick. Yes, the T-1000 himself. Let's face it, folks, no matter what he does, no matter where he goes, no matter what, he's always going to be the T-1000. It's just the way it is. Anyway, he's been in some other things. He's been in stuff like uh, Die Hard 2 and Behind Enemy Lines and Body Shot and Double Dragon and uh, Strip Tease in the faculty, in Renegade Force, in I See You, and he was on the legendary television show, The X-Files. What more do you need than that, folks? What more do you need than that? Okay, playing Lieutenant Frank Waters, James Garner. Come on. Come on. We all know James Garner. Anyway, you know, to, to, to the more modern audience, they might know him from things like The Notebook or Space Cowboys. But, you know, he was in all those kind of classics like The Great Escape, Hour of the Gun, Up Periscope. But let's face reality, he's always going to be either Brett Maverick or Jim Rockford from those two iconic television shows that we all know and love so well. So, James Garner... Come on, man. It is what it is. He had a hell of a career over a hell of a long period of time. Let's keep going. Kate playing Alan Dallas is Craig Sheffer. Now, he's got a pretty good career. You know what I mean? He's been out and about and popped up in many things. You know, in this one, he plays a low, kind of like a low life, but he's, you know, he's played the pretty boy and shit in other movies. But he's been in stuff like A River Runs Through It. He's been in stuff like uh, Some Kind of Wonderful and Nightbreed, which is really, really cool, and Eye of the Storm and The Grave and Deep Core 
and water under the bridge. So, good career, been around. You know, hey man, you see his face, you know his face, it is what it is. Okay, playing Dave Whitlock is Peter Berg. Now, Peter Berg's an interesting character. Yeah, he's been in other movies. Yeah, he's been in stuff like, you know, Deepwater Horizon and Copland and Shocker and uh, Heart of Dixie. And uh, yeah, he was on TV and like, you know, Chicago Hope. But he has chopped out such a big career as a producer and a director. So whether you see him in front of the camera or not, Mr. Berg is doing okay, man. He's behind the cameras and making some shit happen and carved out a nice little niche for himself. So God bless the dude. E T uh, whatever. Playing Greg was Henry Thomas. Now we all know and remember Henry Thomas. He's in one of the biggest motion pictures of the 80s. E T started out as a child star, but he's in other stuff too, folks. We're talking he was in stuff like The Quest and Suicide Kings and you know, Cloak and Dagger, come on, and All the Pretty Horses and Gangs in New York, fucking Doctor Sleep. And he's on TV and like, you know, Betrayal and uh, uh, Sons of Liberty and the, the Haunting of Hill House. So, still going. And he's be able, been able to go from when he was a kid to an adult and have a solid career. And that shit doesn't happen often in Hollywood, I fucking tell you that. Hey, playing Katie Rogers, somebody I always love to see pop up in motion pictures, which is Kathleen Willehoit. I mean, she's been around for a long time, people. We're going back to the early 80s. So she's been around for a while. She's been in stuff like uh, Roadhouse and Murphy's Law and of course Wishboard, which I covered not too long ago, and The Edge and Private School and Angel Fucking Heart. Well, it's just Angel Heart, not Angel Fucking Heart, but you get it. And Color of Night and Nurse Betty and Pay It Forward and on TV. I, 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 shit from everything from Grey's Anatomy to the fucking Gilmore Girls. So, long career, been around, always cool in everything she does. Just the way it goes. And playing Sheriff Blake is Noble Willingham. Now, folks, he's been in some serious shit. No fucking around. I mean, he's been in some serious stuff. He's been in stuff like Paper Moon, Chinatown, Big Bad Fucking Mama. Again, not Big Bad Fucking Mama, but Big Bad Mama. Grease Lightning, The Boys of Company C, Norma Ray, Brubaker, The Howling, Born in East L.A., uh, fucking La Bamba, Good Morning Vietnam, and on top of that, he's been in like 4,000 television shows. So this guy has been in the game for a long time and been in a lot of big movies. Maybe not the star, but he's been on the field in some big shit. And hey, man, you, what more can I say? Okay, everybody, I'm going to try to give you this story in 90 seconds or less to keep this video moving, keep everybody entertained, and get to the summary, which is where we all rather be. Now, the story, eh, it's kind of tricky, because it kind of jumps back and forth, back and forth, but I'm going to try to give it to you the best I can. This motion picture basically starts out, there's a bunch of guys in a pickup truck that come racing out of the mountain, look like they just seen Godzilla chasing them, and they go to a diner. And when they get to that diner, you can tell that they're just nervous to even tell anybody what happened, and they're shell-shocked about what just took place. So they decide to call the local sheriff. The local sheriff comes in, and they tell him the story of what took place. See, they're up on that mountain. It was a logging crew. The crew is run by a guy named Mike Rogers. Mike Rogers, family man, wife, two kids, has his sister living with him, and his best friend was one of the logging crew too, this kid Travis Walton. Travis Walton's dating his sister, he's like part of the family. But while they're up there, mm, something weird happens. They see something out in the tree line, and before you know it, Travis Walton gets zapped and taken by a UFO. Sounds crazy, is what it is, what more can I say? So, they tell the story to the police. The police don't really believe it, they don't buy it. Nobody believes it. The town folk don't believe it. The cops don't believe it. They bring in an inspector from out of town. He doesn't believe it. And through this motion picture, you watch these guys being basically painted as murderers and criminals and all other kind of bad things. And they can't believe that their town folk and their families are turning on them and not believing the word that they're saying when what they're saying is what they really experience. And then before you know it, out of nowhere, out of the clear blue sky, who turns up five days later? Mr. Travis Walton. Now, I'm not going to go any further than that because that would just give you away too much, but that's kind of the gist of it. That's kind of the ballpark of it. It's kind of what takes place. It's a UFO abduction movie, everybody, and it shows you what happens to the people on the other end of it when they tell their story and what takes place and what happens to their personal lives. That, that's basically it. Let's keep going. 
Okay, everybody, I'm going to get to what makes this motion picture work. And this motion picture works, yes, on every level. First off, the biggest thing you always hear me talk about in a motion picture is tone. The tone of the motion picture. This motion picture sets a tone and it follows it all the way through, which is the biggest thing. It follows it all the way through. Yes, there's moments of a little bit more suspense and a little bit more drama, but it has that kind of vibe all the way through and it stays true to itself. It doesn't break out of itself. It doesn't wander off the beaten path, which is 85% of what gets a movie to where it's supposed to be anyway. You have a cast in this that just bangs it out the park. No, not everybody is an A-list level star, but they all deliver A-list level performances. Kathleen Wilhoit as the upset wife uh, of Mike Rogers, she just nails it out the park. She's great. Robert Patrick, I do not understand how his career is not even bigger. I mean, how he'll always just be the T-1000 and, and X-Files, I don't understand. Because he's so good in this motion picture. I mean, you take what he did in Terminator 2, which, by the way, was not easy. It's not easy following a Terminator role after Arnold made it like the mold. I mean, anybody coming into Terminator to play a Terminator after that was looked at, yeah, well, fuck it, he ain't Arnold. And that's just the way that kind of went. But Robert Patrick, and let's face it, the only guy to do it in any of the sequels, who played a Terminator and played him awesome and made you just fear him as much as the original Terminator, if not more, was Robert Patrick. And that takes acting work, folks. That takes intelligence. And let's face it, every other Terminator they've had after that, everybody who's played a Terminator, fucking whatever. You got D.B. Sweeney playing Travis Walton. And he does it with this little bit of naivete and playfulness and wise that you can say, I know that guy. I've known 50 guys just like that guy. And he plays it spot on. Of course, you got James Garner. What more can you say about that? I mean... He is who he is. The whole cast nails it. The special effects are not so far over the top that they bring you out of the motion picture. They don't go crazy. They don't go nuts. It's just literally a little bit of a UFO, some beings in there, and that's the gist of the special effects. The special effects in the UFO really aren't even the movie. The movie is the relationships. The movie is the relationships between all these people who say they've seen something and their surroundings. To watch how the the locals, the people they grew up with, the people they went to school with, are now looking at them at the corner of their eye thinking these guys are just a, a, a rat pack of shit. These guys are horrible human beings. They're a murderer and all these other bad things that they're thinking. You sit there and you really get wrapped up into their story, probably even more so than Travis's story. You get wrapped up in their story about what they're going through, their, their relationships and their standing in the society just crumbling around them. Then, of course, you have... Travis come back and you see what he's been through and the shell shock and the and the adjustments he's making to getting back into a normal life. And yes, as a geek on this kind of shit, I've, I've been into the whole Travis Walton story for years. I've read a bunch of shit on it, probably seen every goddamn interview. Is there inconsistencies in the movie compared to the book? In the movie compared to his story that they've all passed in lie detector tests like fucking 87 times? Yes, there are inconsistencies. The whole thing that takes place on the spaceship is radically different than what they wrote in the book or what he's testified to. There's, you know, they, they've changed a couple of things about who found him instead of, you know, you know, this one, it was really that one. And oh, there's, there's some little things. But the tone and the vibe is relatively right. And it makes a good motion picture the way they have it. You wouldn't look at this and say, blast for me, how dare they make this movie. And honestly, for a motion picture that has drama, that has science fiction, that has a slight bit of horror element to it, that has all those going for it mixed with solid directing, solid music, a solid cast. I don't understand how it's not more beloved and more remembered than what it is. Fire in the Sky, to me, is one of the great little UFO movies. I mean, of course, you got other one. You got fucking Close Encounters, which is probably the great, the granddaddy of them all. But this is not far behind. Yes, maybe in sense of budget. Yes, maybe in sense of star power. But this motion picture is solid. It stays right up there with all the others. And it is a gem that is criminally, and I've said it a million times, overlooked and should never, ever, ever be forgotten. Okay, folks, get yourselves out there if you can and check out 
fire in the sky. A cute little UFO movie that did it better than 99% of the other ones and stands on its own in the history of UFO movies as just a gem of a feature. As always, no matter what, look out for your fellow man. Take care of your friend, your neighbor, and above all else, under no circumstances, take any shit from anybody. Talk to you soon. Be good, everybody. Take care. Peace.